As those images show, the differences between how people in developing countries use and appreciate water can be worlds apart from those people that live in developing countries. And in fact, 18% of the world's population, that's one in six people, has little or no access to clean water. But thankfully, I'm not the only person shocked about that. The United Nations in 2005 set up the Millennium Development Goals for a target of halving the number of people in the world without access to clean water by 2015. So with just six years for the UN to reach their target and in the build up to the UN conference in Copenhagen this December, I wanted to find out what one expert thought could be done. Discussions in Copenhagen will largely be surround how all countries around the globe can agree on an emissions scheme that a um, um, greenhouse gas emission scheme that enables a global us to realize a global peak concentration in greenhouse gases so that uh, um, climate change impacts are minimized right? they're going to happen they should be minimized not actually eliminated largely this will involve carbon polluting nations finding some way of a, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and, and agreeing to a certain policy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, at the same time of compensating through some kind of mechanism, clean development mechanism, contraction and convergence, um, finding some way of enabling countries who are most affected by climate change but least responsible for it to adapt to climate change. Essentially, the transfer of resources will allow, not only allow those countries to develop under cleaner, uh, less intensive carbon use of carbon-based uh, fuels, it is largely about enabling those countries to adapt to the climate change that is already going to happen, is already in the system, and is already happening. Developed countries are, are less vulnerable to climate change than undeveloped countries. So essentially, climate change adaptation is essentially development. And one of the primary foundations of development is not only access to a stable supply of food, but also to access to safe water and sanitation. So a very legitimate and reasonable and sensible use of funds that will be transferred under some scheme agreed in Copenhagen next month would be for those funds to be dedicated to enabling and improving access to water and sanitation. My one concern is that top-down funding under national aid schemes between high-income countries and low-income countries has not to date dramatically improved access to water and sanitation under that kind of mechanism where there is a transfer of resources from high-income countries to low-income countries. So that transfer occurring under the guise of compensation for climate change there is some concern that, that we, although that it should free up sizable resources for those countries to, to improve access to water and sanitation, I do have reservations or concerns that that will actually be realized, that those funds will actually... This, all, this relies, uh, depends upon governments, governance and community participation and structures that are in place in those countries already. However, at its base, at its root, Copenhagen should enable, under some mechanism to be agreed upon there, enable a transfer of resources that should at the very least improve access to water and sanitation in low-income countries. Whether it will enable them to reach the very optimistic Millennium Development Goals is another question, but ideally it will certainly uh, go some distance towards enabling that. Of course, it's not after 2015 the job is done. Remember, that's about having the number of people without access. The ultimate goal should be ensuring that everyone has access.